When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you could save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your moves. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, and welcome to Conscious Talk Radio, and I'm your host, Linda Summers, and these shows are about relationships and all that that encompasses. And the guest experts on the show will be providing you with information as to how you can become more connected with yourself. And today's topic is crystals and how we communicate with them with Joseph Alexander Ovidi. But before I bring Joseph on board, I'd like to give you some background information about him. Joseph is a shaman and master of crystal grid mediumship. He was born with the sacred gift of being able to connect to diverse portals on high dimensions. He has traveled back in time and channeled with several ancient destinations like ancient Lemuria. This has enabled him to bring back to the future knowledge and traditional practices on crystals. His practice has been recognized and acknowledged around the world. He is a master and teacher in the field of crystal healing and manifestation. He is also a counselor and has helped many people, encouraging and motivating their worth and will to life. Joseph is also a building designer and has run a successful home building business for over 20 years where he also incorporates crystals to enhance the vibration of the home from start and after completion of each building project. Joseph has a book coming out soon, and this will reveal many secrets kept from the masses, and he believes it's time to release them to help heal humanity and the universe. Joseph lives in Sydney, Australia, where he grew up in indigenous communities as a child. His upbringing has also aided in other areas of his life as a counselor, healing sufferers of depression and suicide. On a daily basis, Joseph spreads love across the universe through his social media channels. And with that, I'd love to welcome Joseph to the show. Hi, Joseph. Joseph, are you with us? Hmm. I'm not sure. He might be having problems calling us, so let's see. Okay, well, we're still trying to get him on board, so everybody hang tight because this is going to be an awesome show. Let's see if we can't get him back on here. going to redial back in. So anyway, he's really going to talk to us about um, how we can communicate with these crystals, and we're also going to talk about um, the Sri, Sri Yantra, and I'm not quite sure about that, so let's see if we can get him. Hello, Linda. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Sorry um, about that. It, it must be the Maui uh, telecommunication system here. I'm currently over in Hawaii. Uh, a, little, uh, a little slow. So everybody that was listening, I said he's from Sydney, Australia, which he is, but he's in um, Maui, Hawaii uh, for right now. So, oh, we're so glad to have you on board, like really being on the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for Thank doing you. this. Oh. Yes, so I was just talking talking to them and telling them a little bit about what we were going to be talking about. And um, so, but I really want to, if you can give a brief story of how you got involved with the crystals, that would be great. Just so kind of people have an idea, because I, you know, in your um, reading of your bio, you grew up in an indigenous community um, as a child, which also aided in other areas of your life and really probably has helped you with um, yeah. where you've been headed in your life. So, yes. 
Well, what it uh, was is, as a child, I, I was with the Indigenous Australian Aboriginals, and uh, that opened up a different way of living to myself, coming from a European background. But I observed and, and noted a lot of different things uh, in their way of living, which was quite balanced, natural. And then I lived as a child uh, on near the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, in Queensland, where there's a lot of the coral. And I was always attracted to colours and things like that. And uh, further forward in time, I picked up some crystals and had the most profound experience in my heart area and I got instant downloads from them. I was the age of eight and I didn't quite understand what that was but I did uh, have a whole case of crystals by the time I was about 10 to 12 and uh, from that point I realised that there's something more to it than just uh, what meets the eye. Mm. So you took it a little bit deeper. Yes, yes. So going forward a few more years, I've uh, uh, used crystals, connected with them through my travelling back in time uh, through the portals, which I have instant and constant access to, and mm. bringing back the knowledge, which at the time I didn't understand what it was, but I knew it was something that you know wasn't uh, out of the standard type of traveling uh, and I, I met uh, some ancient cultures as you said and they advised me that it's time to bring back a lot of this information which has been available to us for thousands of years Mm -hmm. Was it odd going back? I mean, did you, um, was it uh, an odd experience, you know, did you really kind of understand what was happening when you went back in time or? Yes, yes. At that point in time in my life, I was attuned and open to, to the knowledge mm -hmm. of how to travel. And the way, mm -hmm. the way that it occurs is when you travel back, although your body is here, you're actually, uh, I'm actually traveling back on a different dimension and I'm able to go back, say, for a culture like Lemuria. Hence, I'm mm. here in Hawaii grabbing more, more vibrational uh, information mm -hmm. here. But um, uh, when I uh, go back, for instance, I will be greeted by uh, a vision, a total vision of the time travel. I'm there in the location, seeing the place, seeing what to see and what information I need to bring back to this current reality. And one of the most interesting things that I realized, and I never knew, but in intuitively I always thought, well, look at Egypt. That is a really strange culture. It's unique. Mm. Look at the yeah. colors they use. Yeah. And, you know, I thought, well, there's, there's something there. This is going back when I was younger. And I was uh, shown how ancient Lemuria, and this has also been kept from the masses because, you see, our history only goes back to a certain point. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, nobody knows. But the thing is, when we have access to this information, which is accessible to all of us, if we, if mm -hmm. we learn, you know, how to connect to these portals, and, and it can be done mm -hmm. with practices and teachings. Um, but I, I actually was shown how the ancient pyramids actually looked like, and this is going back to Lemuria now, we're probably talking 25, 30,000 years back, but the actual pyramids were originally like the Inca ones or the Aztec style ones where they had that sort of triangular stepped uh, style, which is still available in, in, you know, in South America, etc. Mm -hmm. So wow. I actually saw these pyramids being built in Lemuria. It was one of the most beautiful places that was colourful, clean, uh, mm. their, their culture was so advanced by mm. using crystals. You see, they were using crystals. They were using uh, crystals in their daily life as we use iPads now. Wow. It's incredible. So I think it's time now that, you know, we need to start using knowledge that's there that'll enhance yeah. our spiritual connection to our soul 
And that's what's yeah. lacking yeah. in society now. Everyone is just self-reliant on social media, on uh, distracting themselves from, from the current reality and being mm-hmm. in another place which really they're not living their life in, in turn. So right. these are the things I'll be releasing in my book and in guidance and some rituals which will help do that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, we have a caller. I don't know if you're interested in taking calls. I'm not sure if they want to just sure. listen in or if they have a question. But if you're if you're interested, I can ask and see if they have a question. Absolutely. Okay. Happy to do. Hi, caller from area code two hundred nine. Are you wanting to ask Joseph a question, or you just wanted to listen? Uh, I just wanted to listen. This is your friend Stephen Ross from a oh, program hi. along the Hi there. hi there. Oh, hi. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us and listening. I appreciate Stephen. Any knowledge is is good knowledge. So I'm I'm happy to to to, to listen to what you're talking about. So thank you. It is Absolutely. it is Stephen. Welcome. Thank you so much, Stephen. Okay. Okay, great. Um, well, and you know, I want to kind of step back a little bit when you talked about when you were time when you were traveling that so people kind of have an idea that it's your soul that's traveling and the physical is actually what's remaining here correct that's correct and you see the soul is where our truth is it's who we are it's it's yeah. our essence and if we're mm-hmm. able to tap into our soul in this realm we're able to do multiple things that you're not able to do with the body that are not capable and that's mm-hmm. the avenue and the tool that that i use to travel back in time but more importantly there are also portals that um that are accessible to myself and I use those portals. Uh, I, I go to certain locations in Australia, in Sydney. There are there are locations that are very high vibrational, and you need to be in a proper vibration to be able to connect with mm-hmm. the portals. So knowledge is available when you know traveling those portals. Um, look, the vibra- vibrational um, uh, thing is 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 just a whole whole other topic. Uh, we're, we're vibrations in essence. We're walking around. People pick up our energy in, instantly. Mm-hmm. You'll walk somewhere. You'll know instantly if you go into heart consciousness on what people are feeling. So the, mm-hmm. the, the main thing here is that we've got to get out of mind thinkingness and go back to mm-hmm. heart feelingness. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree. And, and and the whole thing there is, Linda, is that we have been taught, and, and the, the thing is people don't know, but we've got children which are the next generation that mm-hmm. really, really need to be uh, taken away from the violence on televisions and violence on, on, uh, on you know, computer games and, and all those things because they're desensitising themselves and the next right. generation and the next generation after that will use that as a reference point on how to live. So I think parents really should start taking their children away from all this social media and using that as a mm-hmm. babysitting technique or a pacifier and bring mm-hmm. them back into nature and communicating at a table. When I was younger, we didn't have, obviously, you know, the, these uh, contraptions, but... Uh, or these uh, electronic devices, I should say, but we were able to sit down and talk at a meal. Absolutely, and connect. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That, that's the thing, connect. And when we connect, we, we're we able to yeah. obviously, you know, communicate. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, and you know, like we talked about earlier how we spend a lot of our time at the computer and things like that. I don't think people, you know, it's it's just that it's, really kind of been embedded in us and so to speak that it's been given to us and it's a way that people have used to really um, step away from feelings or they, or they've been taught this is how you make your business, this is how you, how you do life and so um, you know that kind of leads me into this communication of the crystals Yeah, so, yes, that, that's beautiful Yeah yes. Well yeah, the crystals we need to, look, what, what I will say is that with the crystals, and people can start practice, practicing this in their daily life if they have crystals around them. The number one rule is you don't label a crystal. There's all these books out there on, oh, this crystal does that. This crystal wow. will heal this. 
that is the worst thing that you could be doing because what you're actually doing is labeling the crystal before you connect with it and you you would not be able to use it correctly like that a crystal mm. needs to speak to you a crystal mm. needs to connect with you it's a living thing although it's a solid mm. thing as we are but yeah. if you go down to a cellular level it's a, it's a it's a movement of atoms which if we are able to shift our energy to connect with that uh, crystal then we 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 do connect on a deep level and can use that crystal then as a tool and the crystal can be used in many many ways to enhance your life to manifest to heal and that is all done through the heart and there's uh, techniques that are available to do that it has to be done right so it has to be done in the right uh, ambience and your vibration or our vibration must be also a vibration that is in a vibration of connecting with a crystal and that has to be a high vibration it cannot be done fr from a daily awareness vibration example looking at the news watching the television and and shifting and lowering your energies to a, to a, a, a you know a lower lower reality right so if you have a crystal, because, um, you know, I shared with you, I have crystals, but I, you know, I mm. I don't know. I, I, I can't really say that they speak to me. I'm sure they do, but maybe I'm not tuned in. So what would you say for people that are listening that are kind of have, are the same place, you know, that they've got crystals, but because they're drawn to them, but, you know, there's, you know, they're not really, um, well, I've, you know, I guess I could say I've labeled mine because, you know, I was told, oh, this is that, and, you know, you had shared with me not to do that, which I thought was very interesting and, and great to know that. So, Yeah, well, the first wondering. thing would be, uh, look, my advice to people out there wanting to start uh, living a different type of life where they actually have more control of their life, we've got to remember one important thing is that crystals have always been used in electronics as amplifiers. Now, one would ask, why have we used them as amplifiers in our electronics? And when we look at that and start to understand, well, there's something here that we knew about uh, was not expanded. It's time now to expand the knowledge of using crystals. And the way that is done is by preparing crystals. We normally need to... Uh, prepare them in a way that is uh, clean and that is done by using salt, ocean, water. Uh, it is done by uh, cleansing uh, in the sunlight uh, with a pillowcase. There are multiple techniques that are used to prepare the crystals and once that cleansing process has taken place, then there are other uh, techniques used to start connecting with them and uh, we're able to potentially even modulate them. So, for instance, one would would use a crystal in the morning and say, well, I'm achieving this today. Uh, I'm programming you to do this. And you'll see miracles occur quite easily when it's done in, in the right way. So this is what people mm -hmm. need to understand and know is available to them now. It's available mm -hmm. and it will be more and more available. And I think when most of the the people out there that want to change their life by changing their reality, um, I think um, it'll be it'll be one of those things that uh, uh, will be a, a miracle type um, a miracle type process uh, and and understanding and awakening within one soul mm -hmm. here in this reality. You talked about manifesting with them too. Um, and, and then is that where the programming comes in? Because if people are wanting to manifest health or relationship or career or whatever they're wanting to manifest, yeah. um, how is it? Is it that where you program that crystal to manifest that? How does that work? Well, it starts off by connecting with it. You need that connection. Mm -hmm. And it's like any other re uh, relationship. You need a connection before you can move to the next stages. So one would right. connect with the crystal that they've chosen. Uh, throw away the, the ideas of label, labeling any crystal uh, until you've mm -hmm. actually connected with it uh, because that, mm -hmm. in my understanding and, and in my knowledge, is the first thing that uh, deviates people and confuses people on actually 
uh, using the crystal that disempowers the crystal. So yeah. get rid of any labels. Connect with it prior to anything. Then once you've connected with it, and the crystals are actually charged uh, and energized with your intentions through processes of squeezing the crystals so that you activate mm -hmm. the atoms uh, rather than uh, using other techniques. I've found that to be the most potent when you connect with it. The actual crystal will heat up. You'll feel it heating up. When it heats up, it gets very, very warm. And at that point, it is very connected to you. Mm -hmm. I Especially love that. if you're holding it in your hand, yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's it's a lovely, lovely connection you can have with a crystal. And you know what, Linda? It's available now. It's available to the masses to change their reality, to take control of their lives. Right. Exactly. We need to know. We need to come back to that and bring back our power to ourselves. Absolutely. We need to bring back our power, and our power is there. It has been taken mm -hmm. away over the years. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think now it's time, especially because the planet is in a bit of a, a period of massive change. Uh, mm -hmm. We are going to be going through some from critical changes on the planet in the next 12 mm -hmm. months. Uh, if people are able to connect and ground themselves with mm -hmm. the ocean by walking on a beach, hugging a tree, mm -hmm. this will keep them grounded mm -hmm. and they won't float away with uh, issues occurring around the globe. And that you is won't. a very important thing. Well, they won't float. In other words, when we're not grounded, we tend to sort of be up in the sky floating around. Yes. That is a point. That is very important not to do that because if you're grounded, you're able to stay connected to you, to your soul. Uh, mm -hmm. When you are not grounded is when, uh, you know, the possibility of, of uh, your openness to uh, allow other things in, which can affect your, your well-being. And um, and I strongly recommend people uh, ground themselves on a on a daily or you know weekly minimum basis to to keep themselves earthed grounded to the to the soil to the terra of the mm -hmm. you know of the earth Gaia. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you talk about the changes and things like that in the crystals, but you also mentioned ancient teachings and the Lemurian Egyptian connection. How does all that uh, tie in? The tie-in there is that when Lemuria ultimately uh, fell apart, uh, there was breakaway cultures that uh, travelled. You know, there were survivors, there, there were people, uh, ancient teachers that were still around. And mm -hmm. some ended up in Egypt, in the Middle East, which is part of our globe. And it's not, it's not something that could not have happened. I mean, if people travel, they travel everywhere. It might take a while, but they move. And... Mm -hmm. The visions I saw and what was shown to me was that the original uh, pyramids, obviously, were, as I said earlier, were Aztec style, that sort of stepped look. The Egyptians then got and received their knowledge from the Lemurians. And if you go back and, and, and see the, the association between both cultures, current Egyptian or the past Egyptian culture was actually a tribute to Lemurian uh, teachers, which taught them yeah. a lot of the knowledge. They used to use a lot of sound to to move uh, stones. They used to use a lot of sound technology, uh, which was brought to them by another culture, being the Lemurians. Mm -hmm. So then the Egyptians uh, put in a a step of their own on the pyramids and made them triangular, as they wanted to to show what they were capable of uh, using the Lemurian. Uh, technology and knowledge uh, that was brought through, and a lot of people don't know that, but that that is that is a, a truth. That is something that uh, if you start looking into it, you'll see the the connection between both cultures. How how does that? Is there some in relationship to with all of that within today's world, like what we're um, dealing with? Is there any correlation today's between them? Yeah, look, to, no, the, the, the Egyptians uh, broke off. Uh, then you went on to other cultures. There were the ancient Greeks, the Romans, etc., which which okay. brought their knowledge through, their ways of building, etc. Uh, no, the current world is basically a, a byproduct. Sure, we might have, um, you know, electricity. If you go back to ancient Lemuria, they lit up 
their grid system, their crystal grid system, uh, to to have light in their houses through the crystals. I mean, we need to get back to this technology. It's clean energy. It's usable. Right. Uh, for instance, if you're able to use grids in a building of a new home, um, it's shown that, uh, uh, and, and there's been certain uh, uh, instances where uh, in the desert they've seen sacred geometry signs come up and in that location it's rained. Uh, for instance, the Sri Antra uh, has yeah. been seen on certain desert locations and uh, due to the sacred geometry, and uh, uh, the energy that's giving out, it rains in that location and it rains nowhere else in that location. So we've got to ask ourselves, well, what is, what is, you know, what is occurring in those situations that we, we have not been told? Yes. So there's a lot of uh, future use for these uh, sacred geometry signs, crystals, which if you put then a sacred geometry sign or, or visual design, mm -hmm. and within that you use crystals, well, then one can start to see, hey, that there is something that will shift things in this right. reality, and we will have the power to influence mm -hmm. this timeline. Mm -hmm. Well, and actually that's what I was really meaning as far as the crystals, because the crystal grid that you had mentioned about with ancient Lemuria and then the Egyptian um, uh, uh, connection as well, that because I know that there is this crystal grid around the planet and things like that, so there is a tie-in with all of that, and we're just coming, coming. What you're saying is going back to that. We are that's going we back to, to that. There are, yeah, yeah, correct. There are ley lines, you know, running across the planet in certain locations. Yeah. Uh, in my country, in Australia, we've got it running straight through. And it drops down through Queensland in Byron Bay where we've got the hippie colonies. Uh, in America, it runs through different locations. Uh, LA's, got, LA's actually got a very, very high vibration for a city. Um, it has a connection there as well. Uh, but it does run globally. And once we connect with these, we're basically connecting with amplifiers to the crystal. Mm. And once again, I'll be explaining a lot of that in, in my book that will be coming out. Uh, next year, early next year, and uh, and that'll have a lot of that information where people can actually start to connect. See, the information is there, but it, we are not told on what to do and how to achieve. Exactly. What I will be doing is I will be saying this is what you need to do, and this is what you mm -hmm. you will achieve by doing it in right. this way. And we will be opening up a whole new uh, method of teaching, uh, therapies, etc., with this knowledge. How can, because you mentioned your book's coming out next year, how can people get in touch with you if they want to know more about um, what you're doing and with the book and being able to purchase the book? Is there a website Look, they be, can go to? Yeah, there is. Uh, you can go to my website, princeofpeace.com.au. Uh, I'm on social media. Uh, I've got an Instagram, uh, Prince of Peace 777 I've got regular updates and information. Um, sharing the love. But one of my goals is to have uh, most of the population on social media using love hearts within their communication because everything is a vibration. And if you introduce mm -hmm. that in a subtle way through the social media, uh, I, I think we'll start to get shifts in the younger generations in a different way of thinking. So people out there listening, start using love hearts in your communications because it's a subtle energy but it, it, it sorry it has a <clears throat> has a ripple effect and that's what what it's all about is having that contact with the next human and sharing a bit of that droplet of love because that's what's missing currently everyone's running on a on a fear base they're, they're not sure of what's going on um, leaderships in cu countries politicians globally are not trusted anymore and people are left uh, pretty much disempowered. So by bringing love back into their heart and connecting with their heart, not their mind, they will have that ground groundedness and be grounded enough to at least be self-realized to a certain degree to to understand. You know, we're not here forever. We're here to uh, spread love. 
Yeah, absolutely. That was going to be my one of my questions about spreading love. So you're suggesting doing the hearts and sending hearts. Absolutely. I I think that if we can get enough people, and I'm uh, bringing on an event next year, a global event. Uh, it'll be similar mm. to Live Aid, but it'll be something to do with uh, uh, spreading love around the planet. And we need to get enough people around this planet to start putting that in the uh, subtle con- communications of yes. social media because then if we get enough people to use the love heart in their communications it will have a shift on the planet it will affect our reality I love that I love that is there any other tips that you can give us to connect to the heart as well yes uh, a lot of cultures say meditate but meditate to us westerners uh, really doesn't mean much apart from being uh, unrestless and tossing and turning all night and falling asleep. I think uh, the most uh, simple way of of connecting to the heart is when you're having feelings of happiness and your vibrations high enough, you'll feel Mm -hmm. a a certain uh, burning, warm sensation in your heart area. Your mind normally will... Uh, say it's not happening but you've really got to uh, start feeling and making sure that you're aware that that location on your body is actually one of the most powerful locations um, mm-hmm. you know muscle testing shows that uh, if something is not right or there's a, uh, a lie being put through um, you know if someone's lying muscles go weak our heart is a muscle it's, it's our truth it's what we get yeah. to Uh, when we get that gut feeling. So what I'd be telling people out there and and helping them with is be on your own, have your own sacred time daily, listen to soft music and focus your attention and uh, to the heart location and just connect through your upper third eye down to your heart with a white ray. And as you do that, you're shifting your own reality by changing your thoughts you change your reality and you actually start connecting with it. So it's as simple as that. You really need to realize you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely time. Definitely time. It is. It is. It's time, Linda. Uh, The globe uh, needs lots of us to connect together. And it'll happen because, look, everything runs in waves in life. You have your ups, you have your downs. The planet's having her downs at the moment. And a lot of it Mm -hmm. is man-made. But I think now we need to also start, uh, you know, all of us doing our bit because it doesn't doesn't affect our generation. If we have children, it affects their generation and the following generations. And it has to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's really where the waking up is people realizing that we need to, we need to make a change. And they, I feel they know that somewhat, but it's really, if you're really looking and seeing what's really happening and knowing that we have the, the power to do that, um, that to me is really the awakening. Is people waking to them and coming into that space of love. Absolutely. And, and with that comes the realization that you can affect your world, you can affect your life, you can affect people around you because when you're in heart consciousness, People pick that up. People react to that. Mm-hmm. And you know what? You don't need to say a word. They just feel you. They feel your right. energy. They're healed mm-hmm. just by being in your presence when you're in heart consciousness. So it's actually mm-hmm. something that cannot be stopped. Once you realize that you are connected from your heart, that is your mm-hmm. strength. Nothing can stop mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Well, Joseph, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming on the show today and bringing this um, beautiful, the crystal, the um, the ancient things you're talking about that and and how Lemurian, the Egyptian connection, and really about spreading love and really to giving people the tips on to really start in their communication of um, putting the hearts in there and really starting to shift the planet. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. And sending a big love ray <laughs> yeah. out to all listeners. And let's mm-hmm. all be little ambassadors and spread a droplet wherever we go. A good action. 
uh, you know, teachers, spiritual people have been saying this for thousands of years. But you know what? It's time to bring it into our reality because look what look at what we have now. We have a globe that's in turmoil, and if it, yeah. if we we cannot keep going on how we are because it's gonna yeah. it's gonna affect affect us and. We have the power to do something about it, so people get your crystals, start connecting. Yeah, absolutely, and start putting those hearts out and really focus on the positive and how we can uh, bring in the change. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate having you on the show today. Namaste. I love you. Um, Love you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. And thanks to all the listeners out there who joined us today and the ones who will be joining us via YouTube. We thank you so much. We will have Joseph's information on the video for you to be able to connect with him and also find out about his book and how you can purchase his book. Please don't forget to follow, subscribe, comment, and like us. And you can join me next week for the next show, Health, Nutrition, and Your Body with Linda Kennedy. So thank you again, Joseph, and thank you for all the listeners. And thank you, Stephen, for tuning in. Uh, We greatly appreciate that, and all the listeners will be doing this afterwards. So have a wonderful day, and much love to all of you. Thank you. Bye. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can seem intense, like breakup R&B intense. I thought you said you love a sweater that I got you If you didn't, you could have told me Geico makes it easy. Just go to geico.com anytime to update or check your policy without all the extra drama. I even had a gift receipt. At T-Mobile, we're declaring the end of data limits. Introducing T-Mobile One. One price, all unlimited, for everyone. That's right. Get unlimited 4G LTE data on your smartphone, on our network that was built to handle it. And get it at a price that won't break the bank. With four lines of unlimited LTE data for just 35 bucks a line per month with AutoPay. Switch today. Top 3% of data users greater than 26 gigabytes per month may see reduced speeds until next bill cycle. Video typically streams at 480p with qualifying credit discount via bill credit plus taxes and fees.